Om Namah Shivaya. Good morning. How are you? So greetings from uh, Dalat. Beautiful sunshine today. The pine trees are singing. And um, we are approaching the holidays, the Christmas holidays. And um, in Vietnam, it's not so much celebrated. In the uh, Western world, more. And it is a uh, holy, means uh, uh, H-O-L-Y, a uh, holy. I mean, it's a uh, very... Uh, it's meant to be a, a, a very spiritual time. It's meant to be the time that you turn inward and you turn um, to God and then you you do some kind of introspection because not just only Christmas but also the new year coming, the end of the year and the beginning of another year. So even though it's a calendar year, but it's still, it's a time to, to stop and the time to uh, ask ourselves questions about our life and our accomplishment and our endeavor in last year. And then try to figure it out what uh, what is our next step next year. So we will have another satsang before New Year. Um, 27th or 28th. Okay, so 28th, we have another satsang before New Year. So we will talk about New Year and New Year Resolve uh, later on. But now I will talk a little bit about Christianity and Vedanta and about how all um, religious path, all spiritual path and all the path toward um elevating ourselves are all the same. Okay? So whatever your religious belief or your uh, path in life, yeah, we we all uh, um, should do the same thing to elevate ourselves and help others and have meaning in our life. So there's a nice... Um, teaching, but I'm not going to talk to you too much about it, but it's called, um, um, it's a big book. It's called The Sermon on the Mount, according to Vedanta. Yeah, Swami Pravavananda. The Sermon on the Mount is an important scripture um, in Christianity. And uh, Vedanta is uh, the teaching, the main teaching um, Vedanta philosophy teach about the self, about the true self and the path toward the truth. So according to the Vedas, Vedanta comes from the word Vedas. It means the end of knowledge. That means that knowledge, that ultimate knowledge of uh, truth about ourselves and about reality and about our oneness, so this is our ultimate uh, truth, our ultimate goal. Whoever it is, wherever you are, whatever the culture that you follow, so there's a path to peace and the path to um, self-development so can you ask people to put the video on? A lot of people are not yoga family to put their video on. Okay. So as we say, um, happy holidays. So it's a time to turn inward and to find ourselves and correct our course of action. It's not so much a time to go outward and go shopping. <laughs> Even though this is the time that uh, all the companies try to sell more things. Yeah. It's a time that also family reunite and um, 
But sometimes you know, people get a lot of uh, negative reaction toward the holidays because, you know, shopping and about uh, people gathered together, but they are not uh, really uh, sharing. Uh, they are not uh, communion with each other. But then all the negative things, you know, with each other come out. So that's also the time that is very um, uh, difficult for many people. So, you know, it's you come if you come to the ashram, and you can celebrate in called the spiritual family yeah, of uh, the ashram. So it's a house of the teacher. So you can come and celebrate. It's part of your, it's part of your family. Yeah. Then uh, we sing and then we, we share and meditate, do yoga together. So that will be nice. Um, so now the m most important thing that we need to understand is uh, uh, unity of consciousness. That means uh, all the path lead to the same goal. Yeah, the the story Swami told all the time is uh, if you are thirsty and uh, you are from America, you are thirsty and you go to Europe, you go to France and you ask for water in a restaurant. And then they say, no, no, they don't have water, but they have uh, the low. Uh, that's a French word for water. And you say, no, 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 I want exactly water. I don't want to drink anything else. So then uh, you go to um, Germany and then they serve you Wasser. And you say, no, 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 it's a little bit close, but it's not. I want water. And you go to Spain and they serve you Agua. <laughs> Definitely not. And you go to India, they serve you uh, Pani or Jalam. Uh, no. And that wherever you go, they serve you water, but you don't want to drink because it's not the same name. And then you go to uh, Vietnam and they serve you uh, nook. <laughs> no, no, definitely. I'm not going to drink nook. <laughs> so um, names and forms are many, yeah, but God is one. Paths are many, but truth is one. So the advice is we always follow the same teacher, same teaching, so that because this is a teaching that is go quite deep. So if you keep changing and then you get mixed up in a different interpretation and vocabulary, then it doesn't help you. So it's better just stick to one path and just continue, but also it's important to respect other path as well. So... So I myself uh, is born a Buddhist, my family. But um, eventually I met with a teacher that come from India that teach yoga and Vedanta. Then I'm very, uh, I feel that I understood everything. And from there I understand better the other path, the other uh, spiritual path. I understand better also the teaching of my um, my origin. So now this book called the Sermon on the Mount, yeah, talk about the Beatitudes. In the chapter one, talk about the Beatitudes. That means um, I don't know how you translate in Vietnamese, but it means the. Huh? No, it means that the that you are blessed. Okay. When you are blessed. So the number one, the the sermon in the mount, which is a Christian Christian scripture, talk because we are close to the birth of Christ. Okay, birth of Christ means the dawn of the spirit when you are awakened in the middle of the night. Yeah, Christ is born. So it's not a historical Christ. 2,000 years ago, but is the current Christ yeah, at all time in everyone's heart. I mean, when we wake up from, from sleeping or we wake up from ignorance. So that's the birth of Christ, the birth of the inner light, of the awakening. 
So then, um, the first word, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So that's the first teaching. So what does that mean? The poor in spirit. That means when if you come to uh, to try to improve our life, to the spiritual life, then you need to be humble. So that's the main uh, the main teaching. You must be humble. What that means? That means you have to know that you don't know. Yeah. Because if you're arrogant and you think that you know, yeah, then you cannot find the answer. Okay. So because why? Because the mind and the ego will create a certain uh, world and certain way of seeing things that keep you uh, again and again running in the circle of your own uh, preconceived idea. So it's very important. The first quality is humility. Yeah? No ego. Non-ego. I mean, try to put your ego down and try to listen more to the teaching, to the teacher, to others. So then the second sentence, it says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So what is mourn? Mourning. Mourning is, is um, crying, suffering. So the the teaching says, the Christ teaching say that uh, you are blessed if you are suffering, if you are crying. Why? Because if you are arrogant and if life goes on well, then you're not thinking, you see? Then you're just going outward and you are enjoying your senses, enjoy your life, and you're not thinking, you're not seeking for uh, the truth. So blessed are those who are suffering. Blessed are those that are crying. So we are, we might be comfortable in our, our material life, but we are lost. You know, our soul is uh, lost. So then that's, that's why we are crying. So in the, in the darkness of, of our uh, spiritual loss and spiritual loneliness, we don't find connection with our own self. So then at that time, we are ready to turn inward instead of turning outward, and we're ready to find the answer within. So that's why I say, blessed are those who are suffering. So then the first stage of knowledge, according to Yoga and Vedanta, is a longing for the truth. Okay? So we are longing because we live this life, but there is something within us that tells us that there is something else. That is uh, the truth. Okay, so we're longing for truth. We know that what we see is not what it is. We know that this life is is not what it is. And then we stop the blaming, stop the searching outside, and we turn within. So this is the first step. Okay, so when you feel like your life go down, it's not necessarily that it's a negative. Because when, or when you are in disease, sickness, you know, or separation and loss, it's not necessary that it is negative, but it is a time for us to turn within, you know, to ask the true question. And then the third sentence says, Christ teaching, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek. What is the meek? The meek is... Um, the again, the the humble people, yeah, is to live in self-surrendering. I mean, you you are humble, and then you know that you don't know, and you're ready to listen to what is. Yeah, so you meekness means to be ready to live in self-surrender, free from the sense of me and mine. Because when you have the idea of me and mine, me and mine, this is the problem. Yeah. So uh, it's not mean that you have to get rid of well, family and friends. Yeah. This, all these belong to God, so you don't need to get rid of them. Yeah. But we should just switch our thinking yeah, to think that we are the servant, we are the, the instrument yeah, of the divine that we are serving others. 
and with humility. So the, the, instead of uh, thinking that we are powerful, we are strong, and then we are conqueror and we fight and then we are uh, winning, yeah, instead of thinking like that. So that philosophy of always thinking that you have to be successful, you're competing with other people, you are winning, and that means that you are uh, on top of the top of the game of your life. So that is a wrong thinking. Okay, It's better to say, it's not my will, hmm? it's God's will. Yeah, there is free will. I mean, I can do whatever I like out of my life, but I rather listen to God's will for me. I I rather not to listen to my own personal ego will, but I try to figure it out what is the my path, what is the my guru, my master, or my teacher or my God, you know, indicated for me. So there's certain uh, vigilance and certain readiness, you know, to listen, to observe, to listen, to be aware. And not just blindly follow your desire. So then it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So Christ teaching like this, He what is it the uh, what is the hunger and thirst? Hunger and thirst means a sincere desire. Yeah. After righteousness. What is righteousness? In um, Sanskrit, you can translate it as Dharma, yeah, the, 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 the law and the will of the divine. Okay? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst. I mean, you're really wanting it, yeah? for they shall be filled. So that means if you really want, uh, the, you have the desire for liberation from suffering, then you will get it. Yeah? So the most important thing is the desire. Yeah, that means the the yearning, yeah, the wanting to elevate ourselves, wanting to know the will of God, wanting to see the truth. Now, in Sanskrit, it's called the mumukshutva. You need to have the quality of mumukshutva, because if you don't have mumukshutva, the desire for liberation, then you are called so-called content to live this life, yeah, enjoying the life and not seeking, not doing tapas, not doing sadhana not uh, do self-inquiry, not questioning, not doing charity, not uh, doing devotional practices, then because is, we, we are content in the material life. Okay, So mumukshutva is a very important quality, the desire to know the truth and the desire for liberation. So it is said you have to be really wanting to know. Yeah. It's like if somebody put your head in the water and you cannot breathe and you fight for your life. It should be like that. I mean, you have to come to a point of, of being dispassionate yeah, that you don't want to do anything else. You don't want one more shopping. You don't want, <laughs> you, you don't want anything that is false. Yeah? And you want to stick to something that is leading you from within toward your, your strength and you would, uh, toward your health and toward your peace. So that is called Mumukshutva, okay, in Vedanta. One of the important qualification of the one that know the truth, the, that want to know the truth. You have to have desire to know the truth, otherwise it doesn't happen. And then it says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Now, what is a merciful? Yeah, so this is the, the quality of compassion and of being merciful. Okay, so we have to, to stand the path and to want to know the truth, yeah, to awaken from our egoism. We have to start to look around and you start to see other people, but not with the eye of judgment, yeah, and not, not with the comparison and not with the blame and not of the victimization. But we start to see compassion. That means you have to understand where people come from. They all come from called ignorance or avidya. They don't know themselves, so they do wrong thing. They react wrong thing. They might have hurt you, 
but also because they don't know themselves. So you need to be merciful toward them. That means forgiving yeah, toward them because you will be forgiven yourself because you yourself also come from that darkness. You yourself come from that um, spiritual ignorance, not knowing the truth, not knowing, you know, uh, who are you in truth. So then you also have, um, you know, mistaken yourself for the ego and uh, you yourself has uh, compared yourself with others, has judged others, has, um, you know, maybe abused others, uh, being angry at others. So now we have to see that we are, that we are, that we have made mistake because we don't see that others and ourselves are one. So this is the teaching of Vedanta, teaching of all the prophets, teaching of all the teachers, that we are one. So we need the first quality when we are seeking the truth is we need to start to open our heart, yeah, to feel for other people, yeah, to see other people suffering and misery, and to know that come from the ignorance. Okay, Because Vedanta is teaching that um, the self, the true self, is the Atman, and the Atman is Satchit Ananda. Satchit Ananda means existence, absolute knowledge, absolute and bliss, absolute. What that means? That means that uh, our our soul is uh, eternal and is all-knowing, and there is a happiness, blissful state of consciousness within us. So, but uh, we are not seeing it. Yeah, we are not seeing this um, ultimate truth about ourselves. So we identify with whatever that we are doing. And then we very much, uh, you know, judging other people. So we need to soften our heart and have more compassion for people that don't know. Have compassion also for our path. Because it's not easy to, um, to practice sadhana. And our mind also resists and our habits resist. So we need to be compassionate toward ourselves and compassionate toward uh, those people around us and cease to, um, cease to be disturbed. Yeah. Because you can be disturbed very easily by people behavior around you. Okay. Um, you can see other people that don't have the, the, the good quality, then you, you despise them and then, you know, you hate them and other people that are still in a state of sleepiness and not awakened, then you also judge them. So <clears throat> it is said that the, the calmness of mind comes from cultivating of virtues. So what you cultivate? You cultivate friendliness towards the happy. I mean, anybody that gains something and they're happy, then you you are friendly instead of being jealous. Yeah? Mercy and compassionate for the unhappy. So people that are unhappy, then instead of, uh, you know, throwing them away and despise them, you need to feel for them. So be compassionate toward the happy. Um, um, compassion and merciful, uh, delight in the virtues. I mean, somebody that is virtuous, then you need to be happy for them. And indifference toward the wicked. Then people that are bad people, then instead of fighting them and being, you know, upset because of their wrong action, you need to be um, indifferent. Indifferent, let them be. Know that it's a product of, of avidya, so let them be. So with this kind of guideline, we can be at peace living in the world with other people. So then, and um, so the next one, blessed are the pure in heart, or they shall see God. So this is a purity talk about. Yoga. And Vedanta put a lot of uh, focus on purification. Actually, yoga put a lot of um, uh, practices aimed toward purification. P 
purification of the food when you eat the right food that is harmless, non-violent. Yeah, pur purification of your breath. Yeah, and your prana. So when you do pranayama, purification of your your heart. Uh, when you start to to be devoted and love people, purification of your mind. Yeah, keep your mind, you know, simple, austere, turning inward. Uh, purification of your intellect. When you start to think correctly, and uh, not think incorrectly, so you have to study scriptures. So the the scriptures will guide you to think correctly. So there's um, three types of purification. The purification of the ego. So you do karma yoga, yeah, the four path of yoga. Karma yoga, the path of selfless action. There's purification of the mind that is all the time full of desire, running here, there, wanting a lot, being restless. Then you need to practice concentration and meditation, hatha yoga, and then... Um, uh, and Raja Yoga, and then purification of the the mind, intellect that is constantly veiling the truth. So then you have to do self inquiry. So all these are practice of purification. So uh, Jesus say, "Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God." So that means necessary. The purification is necessary step. What time now? Minutes. Sorry, 25 minutes. So there is um there is a person that come approach a, a sadhu or a sage and ask for initiation. So the sage say, No, come back. I, I cannot do it now. And then again he asked, and again long time after he's got asked. And again the, the teacher say no, I cannot. And then eventually um the the teacher say okay so bring your because when you have uh, initiation from teacher you have to bring offering so then the teacher say okay so bring your bowl of offering so he bring all kinds of nice sweets and nice fruits and everything to the teacher the te teacher put in the bowl all the filth and the dirt and the feces and <laughs> all the bad negative filthy thing in the bowl and then, uh, <laughs> so then this student say, oh, my God, why you do that? So he say, well, such is your mind. If your mind is full of impurities. How can I install the pure divine presence in your mind? So please go and clean this bowl like you clean your mind. Yeah, by proper method. Yeah, one of the good methods is japa. Japa means um, repetition of mantra. Yeah, so that has a very strong power to clean the subconscious mind because your mind, you know just a little bit of your mind. You don't know the big, huge, bottom, lower mind. You don't know. So you have to do the, the active effort yeah, to clean the mind, so to purify. And the next sentence Jesus say. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Okay? So what is it? What is this? Yeah, peace, he talk about peace here. Yeah? So peace is uh, something that we chant all the time. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Yeah, they're diff difficult to get peace. Because from ourselves, from inside of us, negative thoughts come every day, attack us. From people around us, their own negative thoughts radiating around and attack you. And then the the people that you don't know, the whole world is negative. That also will pull you down because you we are one. So therefore, we pray Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Shanti. Yeah. But if we want to have peace, according to the teaching of Vedanta, then um, we have to realize our oneness with each other. So a few, two weeks ago, I talked to you, or last week, I talked to you about unity and diversity. You remember? About unity and diversity, 
how the fruits are different, the peoples are different, the professions are different, the animals are different, the insects are different, the landscape different. Everything is different. So that's why you get lost in the world of differences and you compare and you compare and you compare and you waste a lot of your prana. But he said that you cannot have peace until we realize our oneness with God. So that means in order to find peace and to radiate peace, you have to turn within. Not because you are selfish, yeah, but because that's the only way. Yeah, we don't know yet, so we have to awaken from our ignorance. So we have to spend time, yeah, if you can dedicate your time to retreat and to look within, to find peace within, yeah, to realize our oneness, because when you find peace within, you don't judge other people. Okay, so you are at peace with others and with ourselves, and then we become at peace with all beings. Okay, at that time you become naturally a peacemakers. So Swami Vishnu Devanji is a peace activist and a and a peace teacher. A very important team of this teaching is the teaching of peace. He say, peace of mind is happiness. Yeah, yoga shows the way. I mean, we need to turn inward, okay, to find peace. And all the techniques of yoga and yoga philosophy is are talking about how to find peace. Okay, so do whatever you need to find peace. It is from within. Yeah, peace is within. So you, the number one is you have to try, is try to not to be extreme. Okay, try not to run to this extreme, run to that extreme. Because at that time you don't have peace. So you try to um, be a little bit more content with yourself, whatever you got in life. Okay, Don't compare to others. Don't run away and run towards something thinking that it gives you peace. Yeah. So you need to, to stay contented. Uh, don't go to extreme. And practice the sadhana or the spiritual practice that help to regulate your energy and regulate your mind and calm your mind and heart. Then at that time, you become a peacemaker, naturally. Peacemaker, that means you will be the instrument of the peace of God. And then you will help other people. Instead of jumping in and create so much trouble and fighting and fighting with other people. So you become the peacemaker, that means your energy will be helping other people to find the, the, their heart, okay? So they, they say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So the, you are peacemake, doing peacemaking, or in um, yoga language, and we call uh, the spiritual leader, okay? So Swami Vishnu create all the TTC. I believe that many of you have taken TTC, I mean, you have taken the training to become, uh, to elevate yourself, to find peace within yourself. So you become an um, instrument of the divine and you become a peace leader. Okay, so then you are blessed. If you've done that and you continue your sanna, how much, how many people you reach, it doesn't matter. But the main thing is you keep yourself awake and be at peace with yourself. Then you would help to bring peace to the world. Okay, so blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are you, are ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely yeah. So then, um, so when you sometimes you are persecuted, people say wrong thing about you. Yeah. People insult you. People injure you. But if you are able to forgive and forget and keep yourself calm, uh, Swami Shivananda say, bear insult, bear injury, highest yoga. Okay. Why? Because you know the moment that we are insulted. Then our ego get offended. Yeah. Then we uh, we we retaliate 
Yeah. It says uh, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, make the world blind. That means we become, uh, you know, revengeful and it makes ourselves and other people also blind and the whole world go down. Okay, so um, he says that if you are able to bear insult, bear injury, yeah, and uh, re refer to the the truth within, which is you are eternally the Satchirananda Atman, that nothing can touch you really, nothing can hurt you, and um, this is some temporary situation, temporary karma that come. So you need to bear it. So with fortitude and forbearance and compassion, then at that time uh, you will be blessed. Okay. So the same teaching of Christ. And the same teaching in yoga and Vedanta. So now, some other teaching. It's um, there's a teaching on uh, resisting no e not evil. That means not to um, this more or less the same idea yeah the teaching that people don't know so therefore they 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 do wrong thing or they say wrong thing about you but don't don't just forgive them yeah and then there's teaching be ye therefore perfect be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect so this is the teaching. So what that means? Yeah. Uh, how can you attain perfection? Yeah. The perfection is within. The perfection is in the Atman. The perfection is not in this world. The perfection is not in this mind. The perfection is not in your imagination. So don't try to look for perfection in this world and then criticize others or you know, belittle yourself. Yeah, but always try to meditate and then try to see the perfection when your mind is completely calm. Yeah, so try to cultivate yourself that perfection, or uh, is the, the perfection is the purpose of your life. Yeah, but not this perfection. Okay, you try it as much as you can to do your sadhana, and then you get give up result. Yeah. And then eventually your path will lead you to perfection, to see the perfection of the divine. So that's that's what it means. And then it is said, um, in uh, in relationship, the problem is we have a lot of problem in relationship because we try to see the perfection in others. Okay, but um, in our human relationship. Where oftentimes we feel frustrated and alone, yeah, we cannot express ourselves, and we feel that we are isolated and lonely. Yeah, but you need to remember that in human relationship, well, whoever that you are in relationship with, is you have a relationship with the self, with the, your own true self. So this is a teaching of Vedanta yeah, to solve the problem in relationships is you have to remember that the other person is your own self, is your own Atman, is your own self. Okay? So if you love your wife, yeah, you love the wife for the sake of the self. If you love your husband, you love the husband for the sake of the self. It is um, not the husband and the wife, but the, the self itself that is in the husband and the wife. Yeah? So you, So by doing so, you find the pure love. It's not the, the sake of the children, that the children are dear, but it's the sake of the self. So therefore, take care of the children well, love the children, but know for the sake of the self. Okay, so everything that you love, in fact, you are loving the self, or you are loving the truth, or you are loving the Atman, whatever word that you feel that it's connected with you. Okay, so... You have to start to be compassionate and then eventually you start to see 
You see the nine modes of bhakti another time I talk about, you know, all the different steps that we have to go through in order for us to experience the pure love. Okay. And then when we are ex able to experience pure love, then we can, uh, you know, we our heart become more clear and transparent. Then we can experience the love of the self. Okay. So you can see there are many kind of steps that you need to go through in order for you to experience unconditional love. So at least you need to start to be compassionate and merciful um, and take refuge in the divine. Okay. And then you will not be, be bind, bound by the bonds of karma. Okay. So uh, try to, in your life, try to practice nonviolence as much as possible and control of the desires. Because of the desire that you, because of the desires in the, the mind that come from the ignorance that you become violent, abusive. And so try to be compassionate and try to be nonviolent and control the desire. Okay. Um, so the teaching continue, but uh, I just summarize here. We finish. And so then you, the teaching of, of uh, Christ is a teaching of prayer. Therefore, pray to our Father. And our Father means the Brahman, which are in heaven. <clears throat> and um, so you, you have to start to pray because you don't, you don't know. You cannot reach there yet. You have to purify. At, at least the language of the heart is a language of prayer. Okay? So it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So what that means? Seek first you know, the truth within, turn inward, and his righteousness. Okay? And all these things, all the things that you desire externally will be added unto you. The moment that you turn inward and you find the truth within, you become contented and happy and your heart open and your mind is calm and your, your thinking is transparent. Then all the desire that you have will be satisfied. Okay? So it's a... Waste of time for you to run after desire because desire is insatiable and desire is illusory. Yeah. So you you just um, you run in a rat race and then you you waste a lot of of your of your time and uh, you create a lot of um, more karma to yourself and a, a lot of entanglement to your life. Yeah. But you need to take a time. Yeah. And this is a very good uh, time of the year to slow slow down. Yeah, don't run, don't run, don't run, and to try to slow down and um, and uh, seek first the kingdom of God within you, okay? And all those things, all those things that you chase after, will be added onto you, okay? So don't worry. We worry and we have a lot of anxiety. Don't worry about the future. Yeah, don't be anxious. Try to be more and more surrendered yeah to the divine whatever happened will happen yeah and then um the last teaching here judge not that ye not be judged okay so that means again we said yeah, don't judge other people be compassionate see see good in everyone instead of judging them see how their quality, see how good they are, how good they are. So most people do not understand when we talk, when the Upanishads or the Vedas or Vedanta philosophy talk about the self. Yeah, so we make mistake the self and the ego. And most of us don't understand. Okay, Because why? Because we are not purified yet. So if you are not understanding, you have the yearning, a little bit of yearning, so at least you can try practice yoga step by step. Yeah, try to do more yoga classes 
so that your your body and mind calm down and harmonize with each other and you relax yeah so when you do that then you have the connection with the divine which is right within you okay and um it is it is said it is a difficult path the path to to turn within and to find the truth within and to find peace yeah it's a very difficult path yeah but it's a it's a it's a path that is like a have an edge like a razor yeah narrow difficult to tread so all scriptures and upanishads and vedanta teachings say the same yeah that is um uh that is tough yeah, to to determine within our mind what is true and what is false and have the capacity and the courage yeah, to reject what is false and to to change ourselves so these are not are not uh, easy okay but it's a worth it it's worth the the more the if you have a little light little peace within then it's uh, worth it so and the, the last thing it says beware of false prophets <laughs> beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are wolves hmm we shall, you shall know them by their fruits do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or twist 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 souls so anyway it's long but it says um christ teaching also say be, be aware that sometimes some people teach but they teach the wrong philosophy yeah they teach you instead of teaching you to go inward to be contented and to find god uh to find truth they teach a false religion a false teaching will teach you um how to become richer and how to and you know uh not respecting other people um promise you success and wealth in this world um so that so so that is the false teaching so you need to be aware yeah so sometimes there is a teaching on um, that become popular on uh, uh how do you call it the secret the secret there's a movie on uh, the secret yeah that means teaching about the if you think of something then it will happen so if you want to have a house and a big house and just think of the house and it will happen yeah so that is a so it is a teaching on the power of thought which is correct yeah but then from there it doesn't um, lead you further it don't lead you further that you need to be aware of, of the power of thought in order for you to conquer thought yeah and come to a place of meditation yeah where there is no thought i just teach you that that you need to to think and then whatever you desire will happen so people misinterpret it you see so it's good that you find a good teacher a good system of teaching that leads you go deeper and know the the true and false yeah of uh, of the teaching so we all can come to this um, goal of um, um we call Christ consciousness or Krishna consciousness or truth consciousness or atman consciousness i mean you find the 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 awakening to your true self okay so that's um um summary today and i hope that you get any something out of it so that you can think upcoming 10 days before the end of the year you have something to think you can take one of this quality and you can think about it okay if you have any question uh, please write uh, to the ashram and uh, i'm happy to be here and i have happy to talk to you through different continents and um, and uh, uh, and happy to answer your questions if you have question okay but mainly you need to take the time to think and to meditate and be alone and turn inward okay 
And now this is a good time to turn inward, not a good time to turn outward, not a good time to party and to drink and to be crazy and go shopping. And it's not a good time for that. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, uh, we say the prayer and we do arati. Om. So I pray for peace to and health for all of you and enlightenment. Yeah. Knowledge, self-knowledge. Om Trayamma Kamya Jamahe Sugam Dim Pushti Vadanam Urubhau Kamiva Bandanam Mrichoa Moksya Mamritan Om Trayamma Kamya Jamahe Sugam Dim Pushti Vadanam Urubhau Kamiva Bandanam Mrichoa Moksya Mamritan Om Trayamma Kamya Jamahe Sugam Dim Pushti Vadanam Urubhau Kamiva Bandanam Mitchua Moksia Mamritan Om Shanti 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 Om Bolo Satku Shishi Manandamaski Chai Bolo Sri Vishnu Devanandamaski Chai